So it's been like three days and we were a little bit lazy and didn't burp the these bottles. So there was a lot of pressure from the fermentation process. So they exploded a little bit. So burp your, your bottles. Just open the cap after one day and then after the second day um, so that there's not so much um, pressure building up. So we're just sifting this, the liquid from the bottles, which is basically rice water. It should have this milky um, color and it smells very cheesy. I would say like uh, white cheddar mac and cheese, right? Really? Um, so yeah, just strain all of this. I have one more to go here. Um, make sure that you have a large enough container. I'm using three bottles because we're making a large quantity, but like for home garden use, one bottle should probably suffice because this is going to be our mother um, lab and from it we can propagate more and more and more. So. And if you wanted to make more with the same rice, you can just fill up these bottles again with water and ferment them again for around three days. So here we go. Now, um, I bought whole milk. Uh, the best is fresh milk, not the, um, uh, the one that is in Tetra Pak that is uh, outside of the fridge so condensed no it's like this long life milk that is UTH processed so the, it it's like ultra pasteurized and basically dead milk so you want like fresh milk we just went to Publix and got Publix milk um, but you can also get organic milk any uh, milk that contains lactose that's the most important part because Lactic acid bacteria can degrade um, sugars that come from glucose and they also can degrade um, lactose, which is also a type of sugar. And this is how we're going to specify that this is actually going to be predominantly lactic acid bacteria because right now we did the rice wash and in this liquid there's many yeasts and different bacteria uh, floating around. So by adding the milk, we're going to uh, give a higher chance of survival to those bacteria that feed from lactic, uh, uh, from lactose and that can process lactose into lactic acid. So um, I'm just going to add the milk. Uh, there is a proportion. Um, I will put a small recipe in the description, but at this point, uh, really what you want is um, to add a, a considerable amount of milk. I think for the recipe that we were following before, um, it was uh, 150 grams of rice with 750 milliliters of uh, water and one liter of uh, milk. So I'm gonna add a little bit more milk because the cool part of this whole thing is this is also an inoculum to produce cheese. So by adding this milk and letting it ferment for three more days, we're actually going to have a whey um, and cheese separation going on, which we will show in the next couple of days. And the cheese that forms is totally edible if you follow this process in a food safe uh, way, meaning like you use clean, um, containers, you use food grade uh, rice and water and milk. So I'm actually going to try to make some cheese this time around. Okay. 
if you could get raw milk that would also obviously be the best where we are at getting raw milk is fairly expensive so we just bought the regular one and make sure to also leave some space for um, any kind of expansion that can happen uh, I'm going to leave this closed but it doesn't have the gasket so air can come out and it will be also easy later on to strain this is just a kombucha fermenting vessel so it's easy to leave the cheese and then strain the liquid the liquid remaining from this fermentation will be whey and that is actually what we are after because in the whey is all the microbial material and the lactic acid bacteria that we're after so this is again going to ferment for around three days I, it depends on the temperature how fast the process can happen but we will keep documenting in the next few days how the separation starts happening um, between uh, a cheese layer and a whey and there's a third layer uh, I'm having a hard time remembering which one it is I think whey is in the middle I'll get back with you with that once the layers form